Oh, folks, I think we are going to be chalking this one up to be a very expensive learning experience. Folks, today is the day we've been waiting for. We get to start making some significant changes to the Lego City. This is what £500 worth of pick -a brick from the Lego website looks like. In this box should be everything we need to mills plate and ballast all of the train tracks in the city, mills plate, all of the roads that are going in the city, and I can't remember at this point whether I also ordered enough to be able to make a start on the perimeter walls. I ordered this about a month ago. It takes ages for pick a brick to come through from the Lego website, but I know for sure we're gonna be able to get the train track and the roads set up exactly how we want them using this. The roads won't be completely finished today because we don't have all the road plates yet, but at least we'll have the structure of the city with the mills plates in from within this box. I'll show you exactly what's in the box in a second, but first, just wanted to show you what's been going on in the city since you were last with me, because there have been a few more changes other than just this box. Specifically, our little Marvel area is starting to take shape. Over here, you can see we've got the Daily Bugle in, we've got the Sanctum Sanctorum in, we've got the X-Jet, it's there. It's not properly in. We've got some road plates around it, obviously not set up properly at the moment. The road plates do look a little rubbish, just sat there on their own the way they are. That's why they need mills plating up, but we've got some minifigs in as well. That is very much a work in progress as well, because over here, we've got the Avengers Tower, which we have started building, probably getting on for halfway through the Avengers Tower. I also have complete sets of series one and two collector minifig Marvel ones. So we are gonna have a full on Marvel setup at that end of the room. Once I can finish building this, get all the minifigs in and set up. And um, you can see we've got some of the minifigs that came with the Avengers Tower that are already getting started on that as well. And it is gonna look great. We've also got our little construction crew who are in and ready to get started on construction on this lower level. The official town council are in position and watching on. Me and Anna have got our own little sig figs now, which we ordered off of, I can't remember the name of the website, but. It was a cool website. We've also got the uh, the Dungeons and Dragons build, which I've been building on stream, which isn't going to be part of the city, but is sitting there at the moment because I still need to finish that off. I've not got the dragon done on that yet. You can see the Wall of Fame is taking shape. We've still got this 10 kilos of Lego that needs to be sorted. That's going to be coming soon in a video. But for today, we need to go through this box and then ideally at least make a start on getting the tracks out and these plates out and replaced with proper mills plated ballasted train tracks so that it doesn't wibble and wobble around so it's a little bit more sturdy so we don't have this bit where it lifts up in the corner where that goat is currently holding it down and we just want it to be properly modular. We've had lots of questions about mills plates. I think I'm gonna do a video about mills plates soon, just to give you an idea of what they are and how they work. This is a mills plate, which is just a base plate with um, with a load of, I mean, I can pull this up. It's got a load of bricks underneath that just give it extra stability, hold it nicely in place, and mean that it's, it's much stronger and much more secure. You also have the, uh, the little Technic pins on there, which allow you to then connect your different modulars together. So there's Technic pins between these two. I can't even pull them apart. They're nicely secured. But if I just slide the Sanctum Sanctorum, you can see that it's being held together with a Technic pin, which means it then becomes one big, like modular, movable unit and holds nicely in place. And the idea is we then get these on that kind of plate as well. So they can slot in and it all kind of connects together. It'll also raise the level of the roads up. We'll raise the tracks up. And ideally we want the port to get to the point where we've got the roads and the tracks slightly below the level of the pavements and where the buildings are, and then start getting the, uh, the walls in as well. So lots to do. And fingers crossed everything I need to do it is gonna be in this big cardboard box behind me. Which means it's now time for a good old fashioned game of what's in the box. Um, it will all make sense when you see the designs that I've built that I'm planning on doing the plates off of. I went to a website called L-Gage, which is the place you go for information about basically how to use trains in Lego. Absolutely superb website and it has plans for how to get your mills plated ballasted plates 
and just mills plates for roads as well um, and they have parts lists on so i basically worked out how many of each i would need and then ordered those parts so it will seem a little bit mad to begin with especially when you see just how much we've got so we've got an awful lot of red stuff here um so in there we've got a load of i think they're four by eight plates we've also got some one by eight bricks i think that's all we've got in there but there's a lot of each in that bag we've then got an absolute ton of two by two um i think this is light gray tile which is uh, is going to be used for pavements for the side of the road and also we'll be using tile underneath the corners on the train tracks as well i think we've got different colors for that i think that's mainly for pavements we've got this oh my word massive mixed bag full of all sorts of stuff it doesn't even say what's in it but we've got i mean this is all going to need sorting you can see we've got some tiny little pieces we've got little studs in there um we've got lots of two by two plate we've got lots more of the four by eight plate in various colors loads more technic um technic bricks as well the little one by four technic bricks there's some um, one quite a lot of one by looks like one by eight um tile i think there is some technic pins in there as well which we'll need for collecting everything together i am going to have to do a big sorting job before i can start building here um and then we've got loads and loads of one by eight blue uh blue plates what have we got here loads of one by one dark gray plate lots of yellow two by two bricks which i think are for just underneath the uh the train tracks and uh, yeah i thought we had a different color of the uh of the tiles these are for the corners on the tiles just because it can't actually because it's on a bend and plates don't bend uh, this just allows you to get around the uh, the corners properly and has something underneath the train track to offer it a little bit of support let me show you the plans that we're going to be working from so this is a website that i used l gauge it's l hyphen gauge.org if you want to go and check it out for yourself and then i went into resources and reference instructions and then from in here you've got all of these various things that you could want to build and i specifically wanted um so ballasted straight track base plates 16 by 32 and then from there you can download the reference sheet and then you get this little reference sheet that basically takes you through how to do this in fact this isn't the one that i used i used the mills plated version is there a different section for mills? There is mills train modules. Make sure you go to the right one. So this is the one that I did. Uh, mills basic terrain module. So yeah, this sheet looks a little bit different on a proper little mills plate. So you can see you've got the Technic pins round the bottom there. And then this is how it gets built up. So you then can put the train track on top and then the track is at an appropriate height on the plate. So these are all of the parts that go into each straight piece of this so you're now starting to see why we got just so much of that and just looking at the train track the way it's set out now i need one two three four five six seven eight nine i need like 12 of these so it's going to take a while to put these together but 12 of these and i can just click these together add the corner pieces on as well the corner is a little bit more complicated to do um you can't do that straight onto the mills plate so for the corner i'll just build a normal mills plate and then this is how you uh, you set up the support for the corners if it wants to load so you have a 32 by 32 base plate and then two 16 by 32s and then you kind of just building up this corner area that you then rest the track on it doesn't really properly attach to it apart from where you've got the studs the rest of it is just kind of resting on it as it goes around the corner um, and you end up with a thing that will look when we get all the way down to the end will look like that and then you just basically attach the track in the two corners and all these little tiles are there to support underneath of the track i'm gonna have to build that up onto a mills plate as well and then we also have the um the road structure as well for the mills plates so depending on how you want to have it set up so 
These are the ones that I'm planning on doing. Mills, multi-road, straight road on a city base plate. Um, so the idea being you have the road running down the middle of it when it eventually wants to load up. So you have the road plate going down the middle and then you have a pavement on each side and you can see that the pavement is raised up above the level of the uh, of the mills plate below. Oh, looking at that, I am now immediately thinking that pavement is probably going to be higher than the level that the two modulars that I've already got built are at. So we might be making some adjustments to this because I don't want to be putting those modulars on new plates. And to be honest, I don't think we need to be two brick heights off the bottom. So I think we can probably make some adjustments to this. It's time to have a little bit of a fiddle. We might have ordered parts that we didn't necessarily need. Now I've looked at it with an extra month's worth of Lego experience, but that's what we're playing with. All of which means job one is to sort through that massive box of Lego. I'd like to get one of these plates done by the end of this video to show you the plan. Well, there it all is, sorted. Um, we've got loads of red and green in there. That's not just me being red, green, colour blind. But uh, yeah, that has taken me the best part of probably two hours to sort all of that. Obviously, it will all go into the drawers eventually as well. But now that it's all sorted, I guess we mock up some of those plates and get an idea of how they look and whether we need to amend them to fit them into the city. I may be regretting spending all the money that I spent on these particular parts because I've followed the plan off of the website for the um, for the road. There you go, this plan. Followed it exactly. And this is what we end up with. And I think this is probably for brick-built roads because, A, these roads don't fit in right. But even when we do, there's nothing supporting them in the middle. I think this is to do brick built roads on. So, and plus quite apart from anything else, this this is too high anyway. If we go and put this over here in front of the modulars that we've got, that curb is too high. So I think what I'm gonna do is use this as a base to kind of come up with my own. If we pull this bit off, for example, so these bits, I think just on a base plate might be the right height. See, even that's too high because we'll have a base plate under it. So we need to go. Okay, let me have a fiddle. I'm going to come up with a plan. It's now much later in the day after my football manager stream, but before I streamed, I, uh, I came up with this, which I think is a solution based on the parts that I've got currently. So you can see that it does now level, line up properly with the with the modulars. I'm blocking all of the light in here. Let's turn one of these lamps around so you can see properly. There we go. Um, so you can see it does line up properly height-wise. The only problem we've got now, which is a solvable problem, is that all of the modulars seem to use the dark bluish grey tiles for pavement, which is the same colour as the road plates and then have this edge in the light one, which is the one that I've got for my pavements. And I think, well, I have two ways of potentially solving that. Way one is I swap them. So on the modulars, I swap all of the dark bluish gray tiles for light bluish gray and have the pavement just come over and continue there. Option two would be to use dark bluish gray as my pavement tiles on my road plates and then just have the light one as the curb, and I think that's what I'm gonna do. So I've now gone on Bricklink, not doing another big Lego order, got on Bricklink, much cheaper, and ordered quicker as well, and ordered a load of these two by two tiles in dark bluish gray. Um, I've also ordered ah a few other bits as well, because although this is fine, it's not perfect. Let me Let me show you it. So I've deliberately left this side half done so I can show you what I've actually done. So I've got the road plate in the middle of the in the middle of the plate with just one row of plates below it just to bring it up one plate thickness so that it then is exactly in line with brick thickness. So you can see I've then got these uh, these bricks here 
to just kind of level that off. And then we've got into more normal Mills plate stuff there. We then use some of those red plates that we got and some uh, four by four gray ones that I already had in my inventory because I need the gray ones on the edge so that it looks like curb all the way around. And then put the, uh, the tiles that I've got on top of that. So it does give us a pretty decent looking curb. Um, it's basically inspiration for this stolen from a Brixie video and also a Bevins Bricks video. I actually bought the Bevins Bricks um, rebrickable guide to making these. This isn't exactly like his because I didn't have all of the parts that he had. Um, he has a slightly narrower curb and then a white line that goes down there as well, which I might toy with or I might just leave it like this because actually I think for me and not really being that interested in cars and this is really a place for my minifigs to hang out rather than necessarily to have the cars actually I think this works quite well. I obviously have the option as well of maybe moving the road so it's not completely in the center. So I maybe have a slightly narrower curb, a narrower pavement on the side where the modulars are because I'm only ever going to have modulars on one side of the road in my city. So I could have it so we only have maybe two a, fit, a thickness of two tiles on this side then we have the road then we have a wider area before we hit the retaining wall on that side. So that's something to toy with as well but I think I'm going to pause the roads for now because I don't think the modulars will look as good if I change their tiles to match these. So I think I need to change these to match the modulars. So I'm going to get some darker greys for these. The design I'm happy with, I just need to replace all but the curbstone bits with the dark bluish grey tiles. So roads, I think I'm happy with. Now I need to figure out how to do the train tracks. Oh, folks, I think we are going to be chalking this one up to be a very expensive learning experience. Mistakes I make so you don't have to make them. I've done two different versions of these, um, of these train track plates. So I've done the one that's just on a normal plate, so not a Mills plate. And as you can see, you can see all the coloured bricks. And I was like, that's weird. I thought this the idea of this was that it was ballasted. I didn't read the instructions, I just read the parts list and it kind of stopped at that point. So I tried the Mills plate version, which nicely set up on a Mills plate with the area for the track to go on. You then put the track on and again, you can see all of these different colored bits of Lego through it. So I've had a look back on the L Gage website and it turns out it's very much a reading comprehension issue for me because what I've done is I've taken ballasted straight. So the part list that I've done is the ballasted straight track base plates. In fact, it's not even in this section. I did it in the Mills train module, which I think is probably why I've made the mistake because I've looked at that picture, read Mills basic terrain module and thought, right, that's what I want looked at that picture there and been like, yeah, that's exactly how I want my train to look. So I've gone to that parts list and ordered those parts for the number of those that I need. But all those parts do is get you to this, this bit. And for the bit that goes on top for this bit, you also need, um, yeah, this the ballasted straight track, which is what does the track. And then you build this module that, you know, the, the stuff I've done is literally just for the base plates. You also need all of this per one piece of track to do the ballasting, which just based on the straight tracks that I need in my city, that's that many parts that I don't have. And that's just for the straight bits. I've got almost as many corner bits as straight bits and the parts list for the corners is even longer. So I've stopped working it out and I think I'm calling an audible. I'm already 500 pounds into this project. And luckily the stuff that I've got so far can be used for the mills plates for the rest of the city. The whole city is going to be on mills plates. I didn't have nearly enough parts before to do that. With what I've got here, I can now mills plate my entire city apart from the train tracks. So I think what I'm going to do is kind of abandon the plan to have fancy mills plated ballasted train tracks at the moment and just stick with the train track for now can be on these plates. 
We'll work on the rest of the city as we get a little bit further in. And I feel ready to go and do another. I mean, realist, I don't even, just for the straight bits. That is over a thousand Lego pieces. So <laughs> you're looking at another 500 pounds of parts just to, just to make the train track look a bit more like a real train track. On top of the 500 that's, I'm not sure I'm willing to spend a thousand pounds on train track. So we're gonna leave the track as it is. I might swap out some of the colors of the plates because they are obviously a little bit random. So we might just try and go with all green plates all the way around. We might try and raise them up. We might try and do something with them to make them look a little bit better than they do now. But um, yeah, as nice as this would be, and this is definitely a goal to aspire to further down the line, but I feel like this is very much a last stage end game thing for the city. And it's such a financial obstacle and time obstacle because never mind the finances. If I order the parts to do this now, I've got to wait another month for them to come. And I don't want to sit here and wait another month before I can really do anything because I'm waiting for my train track pieces to come that are going to cost me another 500 quid. So I think we we draw a line under trains. We are grateful that we have all of these parts because these parts are all useful, thankfully. They can all have other applications throughout the city. Um, and I think realistically, more of a visual impact for the city for the next time I drop money on a big pickup recorder, I think the walls, the retaining walls that are going to hide the raised platform are going to have much more of an impactful difference at this stage than doing this to the train tracks will do. So, like I say, Making these mistakes so you don't have to. If you are tempted to do your train on a properly L-gauge spec Mills plate system, because that's what the clever clogs, fancy pants people do, just be aware of just how expensive that is for a relatively small amount of track. That's the other thing to emphasize. This is, as train tracks in LEGO cities go, a relatively small amount. And uh, as an estimate, just to get that whole track on Mills plates and ballasted, it's going to cost me over a grand. And I'm not doing that. And it will murder me, quite apart from anything else. I'd rather spend the Lego uh, money on Lego sets. So I think I am going to quietly and carefully just sort all this Lego back into my storage system. At some point, we'll go through the bulk Lego as well. We've got a nice little library of Lego parts now. I shouldn't need to order any more pick a brick for a while um, and just get on with. Uh, get on with sorting out building the modulars and I've got, I can do the roads. I've got everything I need to do the roads. The roads are going to look good. And once we've changed the color of some of these plates and made them all green, I think we'll go all green. Um, they'll look fine. And then eventually we'll upgrade them to looking good when it feels like it's a job that's worth doing. But, ah, oh, this has been not only a lot of money, but like six hours of fiddling. And that moment of realization when I was like this, this is not what I expected. This is only halfway there. I was horrified. It's 11 o'clock at night. I'm going to go to bed. Hopefully you found this video useful, even if it was only to know not to make the same mistakes I have. Hopefully the next LEGO City update will be a little bit more positive and a little bit more cheery. Hopefully we'll get a few more modulars in and uh, maybe make a start on some walls or some staircases or something. Get the roads in or... Oh, I'm so annoyed i'm gonna carry on building avengers tower because that would cheer me up if you've enjoyed this video please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on it for us subscribe to the channel to see this turn into something a lot more impressive than it looks like right now and hopefully to see the room a little bit tidier next time i do a video as well and thank you very much for watching